So what was in the Wago box? Let's find out. So I open it up. And these are the new Wago box pro. I've got three in here. So three Wago box pros. And look what we've got here. We've got the environmentally friendly two two ones. Plenty of these. Spot on. So the Wago box pro. You're probably looking at it thinking that's a bit of a different box, a bit different than the last box, which was why did they change design? From this, because this is what they bought out originally, where you got your Wago box, and you can put your little Wagos in there nice and out of the way. You got the small one and the big one. But then this one is a complete change. So I would say, yes, it's the Pro. So what we'll do, we'll wire this up with four cables going in and see if we can close it down and maintenance free just to exactly how it's used on site. Oh look, it's got a little bit in there to explain to you how the way goes go in. So you put them in the top and then push them in. Now that is secure. Whoa, but they slide to different positions. That's not a bad idea, I like that. And to get them out, oh, bit of a trick. Bend the lid back a bit and pull it out. Look at that, it comes out nice and easy. So they're not stuck in for life either, you can change them. And then, some more of these which I like as well, can fit straight in there. If you want to use it as a straight through box, you can. And that's not a bad little fitting in there. They go in nice and easy. Should have put that one in first possibly, but just put it in, give it a push, and there we go, they're in. They don't come out when you're pulling the levers up as well. But do these come out easy? Yes. Just give them a push and they fall out. Right, so what I'm going to try and get into it is a live and neutral, a two gang switch wire out to a light outside and then that light outside has also got a PIR. So that's going to need a permanent live as well. So then what we want to do first, get these cables out of the way, see where they're going to go. And this is going to go just here. And if you look in here, it's got four little screw holes where you can mount your box. So let's do that. With our four little screw holes, which you should be able to easily get in. There we go. You can use the inside ones or the outside ones, depending on where you're gonna mount that box. Now, I just wanna see where these are gonna go in. So I wanna terminate that. So we've got plenty of cable going into the box, plenty of the cable going into the box, and again, Plenty of cable going into the box, and then plenty of cable going into the box. But then this one must be done with this. Score it round. Now, we want to get them nice and neat into that box. So look at that, that fits in there perfect. That doesn't take much pressure at all to put in there. But what about the second one? Yes, with a twin and earth cable, you're quite easily getting them in. Twin and earth cable, that feet in there beautifully. But well, this is the one that I knew that might be a bit of a pain. Oh, 
it squashes the box lid open a bit. Don't know if these are designed for flexes, but we shall see when we shut it. And we're just gonna have to push that in, but it does flex. It does flex in there, look. So we should be able to get it. So firstly, we pull these out of the way. I wanna get the earths in. So then firstly, we've got all the earths. So what I'm gonna do, as it says on the box lid, push it down, click them in, spot on. We have got our bit of sleeve in here for the earths. And I like to bend it round and go in. So that's what I'm gonna do. Give it a bit of a slack to go to the back of that. And the same with this one. So we've got one, two, there we go, two. So that swoops around nice and neat. And that one will come down the bottom of the box again and swoop that underneath them cables and then into that one. So that's your three. And then the flex. We'll bring that round the bottom, swoop that underneath this, this side of the cables and come straight in once again. Now we want is to form them in to make them look pretty. So we'll lift these up. So then, firstly, we want number one to go into one. It doesn't necessarily matter if they go don't go in one, two, three, four, but if you can, it sounds good. That's all. It sounds good. Doesn't make any difference to testing or to functionality of how it works. It just sounds good, you know? So I'm gonna tuck them down out of there so they're sort of neat and out of the way. And this one, so we've got that one in there as well. Then your earths, give that a bit of a twist because it's stranded. And that one is also in there. So then that, is all your earths in there, nice and neat, out the way. And that is just a spare earth terminal if you ever need one. Right, now then, we haven't got any neutral go down to the switch. All we've got is a neutral coming in, and then the neutral going down to the outside light with a PIR, and then a neutral going down to the light. So basically, We've got three neutrals. So then again, let's copy the diagram, what it says. Fit that in to our three neutrals. So then we'll get this to go in here. Like so. Like so, da da da. That one, that one, and that one. And because this one's grey, we will put a bit of blue on it to identify it, it as a neutral. Pull these levers up once again. We can get that neutral in there. Give this a bit of a twist, because flex. Don't want the strands coming out. Get this. Let's go straight in there. And then this one. Can go straight in there. So now we've got a neutral to each light fitting. Apart from the switch. We don't need one to the switch. Because basically there is two switch wires coming up from that switch. For these two circuits so now we want a live to go in there which again we want a permanent live to go to the PIR so again we want a three so put this 
in there, lift them up. So we'll have the permanent live coming in to there. Uh, the permanent live to the switch, we're going to need that. And then the permanent live, which I'm going to use for the PIR, will be the black. So I'm going to label it with a bit of black sleeving to say that that is a live cable as well. Just so it doesn't confuse people when they think, oh, that's a neutral. No, that is a live cable as well. Right. This. 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 Get rid of them. Some out. We go. And then levers are all up once again. So we want our live straight in there. A live down to the switch. And then this is our permanent live to the light with the PIR. So it's got an outside light on it, so it wants to be switched and PIR controlled. So then now we've got these two switch wires. So we want to be able to put these with a bit of brown sleeving on as well, because these are also live wires. So it can confuse someone else when they come along. So basically, we want two, let's use the green ones. Two switch lives going out of there. So we'll have this. You don't have to use green for your switch wires, but you can. Look at that, I filled it up, that's beautiful. So then now, We'll have one switch wire that comes up and we'll go straight into there. And then the other switch wire will come up and go straight into there. This is why it's nice to leave plenty on them. Pull these levers up. So we've got a switch wire that's coming up. I'm going into there, which will send the switch live out. And then another switch live from the switch will come up and go into there. So now all we want is to connect the PIR switch live on to one of the switches. And then the light going out onto another one of the switches. So basically that two, two gang switch will switch the light, both lights, and then the PAR will work on that circuit as well. And then there we go. Oh, a bit rough. There we go, that one in there. And that is a nice, tidy, Junction box. But we do also want to know, does that lid close with that? So it might need a bit of persuasion. But yeah, look at that. It closes. And then all you need to do is put your cable ties on there for maintenance free. The Wago Box Pro as well. It's made for up to 450 volts, so you can use it for a free phase supply as well, which will be an advantage if you're switching like motors or joining cables for motors because you've got plenty of spare ways in the bottom as well. You've got them bottom ones. And it can use up to 32 amps. So obviously these Wagos are rated for, rated for up to 32 amps. So yeah, on some motors that are less than 32 amps or up to 32 amps, it will be um, an advantage to use this as well. So let's have a look how many conductors you can actually fit into the Wago Box Pro. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 
16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. 21 connections can go inside this Wago box. However you configure them, it's down to you. So there we go. In the comments below, give me a thumbs up if this Wago box you think will be a hit. Or thumbs down if you think, nah, it's no good.